Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hey, everybody. I'm Louise from Wildflower Will, and welcome to the Wildflower Will's Knitting Channel. It is our weekly live podcast. Typically, I am here Monday nights, but this week didn't go as planned, so we are here Tuesday night. So yesterday on Monday, you all voted for which yarn would be this week's project. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the voting, some of your comments, some of your suggestions, this week's pattern. And I have a little bit of knitting to show you. Um, we'll talk about last week's mini sock knitting challenge for the last week. And, uh, and I have some purchases. I have some new yarn to show you. And then we will chat about what you all have been working on. So voting. This is what I picked up. So I was away. Last weekend was our long weekend here. And um, I did a little yarn shopping while I was away. So these are both new yarns that I picked up. Hi, everybody. Oh, let's... okay. Um, I'll talk, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about my knee when, um, I'll talk, I'll tell you what yarn won first and then we can chit chat about my knee. Um, so yarns, which one? So you were voting left was this beautiful hand spun that I picked up at a local market. I was so excited that she was back. I bought some yarn from her last year and I knit a cowl with. And uh, so I picked up this. There was a lot she had. Nice big basket of hand spun yarn that she was selling. Some of it was dyed, some of it was natural, some of it was, there was a lot of merino silk, uh, merino cashmere, some nice blends. There was some other more rustic-y yarns that she had spun. But this one really called to me just because it has little bits of blue in it. So it, it's a lot of like an off-white and some beige brownie colors with a little bit of blue and just ever so little a little bit of sparkle. Can you see the sparkle? I'm not sure if it's picking up. There's just a little bit. That's not crazy. Not crazy sparkle like my Christmas socks. My Christmas socks are like, you almost need sunglasses for those. This is just really light. Just, just however, like if the sun catches it, you see some sparkle. Anyways, I really, really like this. So I thought this would be fun. And um, the other stop I made was Listable. I stopped at the Spinrite factory outlet. And I picked up some more of this yarn. So this is Patton's Norse, which I think I was I was gonna look it up and then I completely forgot you guys. Um I think this is discontinued. I did a quick look when I bought this and when it when it came up, it came up. There was a lot being offered on sale for on Etsy, maybe eBay. Um um, what do I want to say? Canada yarns. They might, they may have came up with it. So I'm not sure. I have a feeling it's one that one of those ones that was out for a little while and it kind of came and went all pretty quickly. So anyways, this is a chunky, it's a wool acrylic blend. What is the 54 acrylic? 28% wool, 18% polyester. So mostly acrylic with a bit of wool in there. And it is, I don't know what this, I don't even know what this is, you guys. When I actually pulled out a strand to look at it, it's it it doesn't really even look spun. It actually, what it looks like, I went, I saw, um, went to a rug hooking show this weekend and it actually looks, it reminds me a lot of their fabric strips that they cut. So I don't know. So this, this is somehow, this will be, I don't know what it is. Anyways, I don't know. It just looks a little different than, uh, than regular spun like plied yarn, but it feels really nice. I mean, it's acrylic, so there's not an itch factor in here. Um, chunky, I believe is what it said it was. Yes. A number six, super bulky is what it is. So they're suggesting, oh, I think eight millimeter. Either the printing on these ball bands are getting smaller. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. 
I think it's, I think it's an eight millimeter. I think it's an eight. Anyways, I thought this would make really nice cozy mitts and they actually had a sample mitt knit up with this and I put it on and it felt really, really nice. So this was an option. And what color is this? I don't even know what color. It's kind of a goldy. Oh, sunflower. Interesting. I didn't look at the name of it. So this is sunflower. It's really, really pretty. Let's go back to the home, the hand spun. So this is hand woven by Doreen is what her business name is. And it is, there's not a lot of yardage in this, but I think there'll be enough here for mitts. There's 68 grams. It says, okay, so it said it was blended on a blending board, merino, cashmere, silk, a little bit of Romney and a little bit of bling. So there's a good, nice little blend in this. So I just, I don't, I had this urge to make mittens. And when I saw this, I have to admit, I was, kind of, well, I mean, I saw this in mittens and I liked it too. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, it would be nice as a mitt. So I know there were some comments when you guys were all voting. There was, everybody was leaving some comments and there was a lot of pros for both the hand spun or the acrylic blend. There was, I don't know who it was now said, Louise, go with the, go with the chunky because I, there's a, I can get it finished faster, which is completely true. There were some other comments saying that the acrylic would be more durable. It might make a better mitt. There was, I think it was Lynn said she is a hand spinner and she's, and I could just feel her like practically cringing when I said I wanted to make mitts with this. And she's like, oh, my hand spun is so precious. She said, I treat it like super, super gentle. Um, so I think she was thinking mitts were going to be, it was going to be too, um, too much wear and tear, especially because there was cashmere and there was silk in here. And she must have blown up the picture because she said, because it's loosely spun, she thought that this might not be the best choice for mitts, which she could probably be 100% right. So, oh, Lynn, you did cringe. <laughs> see, <laughs> well, um, we'll see. So I see Liz is giving me the drum roll. So let's, I will tell you who won. So hi, everybody. We see everybody's everybody's coming in here so i hope everybody's got their their knitting and you're settled in for a little bit of a chit chat tonight um oh hey cindy so okay the voting it was a little one-sided we had a little over 100 votes so there's 102 votes all together so you guys all know i think we're pretty consistent here with the number of votes and the number of people who watch every week so you guys all know but in case there's anybody popping in new or anybody catching the replay every monday you can vote on wildflower wool's instagram page on the stories wildflower wool's facebook page and right here on youtube there is a post put up in the morning that you can vote for either the yarn the technique the project um so yeah, so it was pretty well across the board. Sometimes Instagram and Facebook are divided for whatever reason, um, but it was pretty much one-sided this week for the uh, for the voting. So 102 votes all together, and the winning project it was split 65-35 percent, and the winning project. Oh, I do have to say, one very smart person said, Louise, you're on vacation this week. Why decide? Knit them both. I like that. I like that comment, too. So here we go. So 65, the yarn with the votes, most votes, 65% of the votes for this week's Mitten Cast On is, ta-da, hand spun. So Lynn, I'm so sorry that you are probably, <laughs> probably going, oh, no. But I will be very gentle with my mittens. And I just, I don't know. I love this. Hopefully it will stand up well. Um, I don't know. I'm like, I don't, I, well, we will find out, won't we? And maybe it's because I didn't spin it. Maybe if I had done, because I know spinning is a lot of work. And I've, I've dabbled with a little bit of spinning. And I know you prep the fiber and you spin. Oh, <laughs> Oh, 
oh, Lynn, you're too funny. Lynn's saying, no, I'm off to therapy. <laughs> okay, we'll have to do a weekly check-in on how my mittens are holding up once it decides to get cold and snow here. <laughs> um, exactly. So, Jocelyn, and see, this is exactly what I'm kind of thinking. And Jocelyn just said it perfectly. She says, yay for hand spun. It's too pretty not to use. And that's kind of my thinking. So kind of back to the thought where I didn't spin it because maybe if I had done all that prep work, if I had blended the fibers and I had spun it and did it, you know, did two plies and then plied them, maybe I would be more cautious with it. But I was just like, you know what? I love it. And I'm going to use it. Which for you guys, it should be like a lot of you should be rolling on the floor at that, right? Because you guys all know my stash is excessively large <laughs> and three quarters of what I buy has not been cast on yet. And I thought, you know what? Life is too short, you know, use all the pretty things. And so I'm going to, you know, that is if I get them done, but that is the plan. But I just, I loved this. I loved the colors, that blue and the brown. It will kind of remind me of the beach in winter, the sand, the frozen water. I'm going to like, I, I'm, I'm going to try it. And um, we will see, right? And I will love them. And if they don't stand up as well, I will buy more. <laughs> I will buy more. I will buy more next summer when I'm up there and maybe knit a cowl or a hat with it, but we are going to give it a whirl. Uh, let's see here. Jutes. Okay. Jutes says spinning, in my opinion, gives you insight on how to get the best from your yarn, especially if you spin for a specific purpose. It's a science. I, I agree with that. Hi, Catherine. I would love to take a spinning class. You guys know, I've, I've said this before. I've got two wheels here. I have two or three spindles. Three, I think. I think I have three spindles. So I have this urge to spin. Like I always want, like I really want to spin. And my friend um, that I see every week in another knitting group, she just took a spinning course from our local weavers and spinners group. And she's really enjoying it, which is really kind of sparking me to think that like I maybe, maybe should, I should actually take a class and learn some more of the details and, um, and get, and get a little more serious with my spinning. And then too, Lynn, we may be a year from now, if I actually do the spinning course, I'll be like, Lynn, you are so right. What was I thinking making mitts? But for now, I'm going to do it. I'm going to wear, them. I'm going to love them. And we will see what happens. So thank you guys for all voting. Now, mind you, having said that, kind of, I do really like this. And I have a bunch more of this. Quite a lot more. <laughs> a lot more of this. More than you're going to see tonight, actually. Um, I want to do a couple things with this. So I might still, um, I still might make mitts with this, but I have some yarn to make sweater. Liz. You know what? That I I agree with that statement too. Liz says yarn is meant to be used even hand spun, and I think what did I? Oh, the hand spun that I had a few weeks ago. My friend that spun that um, kind of blue, green, yellowy yarn for me. I had that thought go through my mind too. It was like oh, because I think I thought about mitts with that, and I think instead I went hat and cowl. But I thought you know what? We spin the yarn to knit with and you know like going back hundreds of years when spinners were you you were using like you were spinning to clothe yourself and keep you warm right so I think there's a balance I think we definitely you know it should be durable and we should use it but I can also see where you would want to baby it because it is a lot of work so I can see both sides there um Oh, Lynn says, she says, I'm happy that you're going to give it a go. I hope you prove me wrong. Well, you know what? If you, Lynn and you are, you are more the expert here. I certainly don't know. You know more because you, because you like um, the other comment, right? That Jude said that as a spinner, you kind of know the ins and outs and, and what's good for what and what project. So you are probably completely right, but I am going to knit this up. I'm going to wear it. And as long as it lasts, I'm going to love it. It's going to live its best life. 
<laughs> for however long it lasts. So anyways, I'm really, really excited. Mitts, you know, even though mitts is winter, right? I mean, that just mitts just says snow and I am still loving summer. It is beautiful weather here. It's not super, super hot. It's just beautiful. Um, yeah, I don't want to think about needing them yet, but when I do, I want to have nice, cozy, warm new mitts for the winter. So, okay, so then we talk a little bit about my niece. So, you guys, the whole reason that we are here Tuesday night was because, yet again, I fell yesterday. Ironically, I fell right across the street from the hospital, <laughs> which was good good you know that in that sense it was good I was super close so yeah I d it was a fluke it was um anyways yeah anyways I went and had an x-ray at the hospital because my knee was very very sore very swollen very bruised um but nothing thankfully was broken so I was I was pretty sure nothing was going to be broken because I'm kind of an expert. I have a little bit of experience if you have a broken kneecap. And um, um, so anyways, Susanna, this is the wedding hand spun. So anyways, it but it is still, it, nothing's broken, but it's still really, really sore. Really, really sore um, and swollen. So I just kind of took it easy today. Didn't do a super lot. Um, just rested it mostly, and it's it's feeling better tonight than it did this morning. So that is good. So no broken bones. I am just considering this one more of um, doing my own bone density test. So um, and I'm, I seem to be passing. I've had um, two falls since my last broken bone, and nothing was broken in either one of those falls. So I don't know. I think um, I am just unlucky. I think is, yeah, so I don't, I don't, I, I'm totally at a loss how to prevent this from happening again, but fingers crossed, I should be good for a couple of months anyways. So anyway, so thanks guys for, um, for joining in tonight instead of last night. So by the time, because I was still away yesterday when I felt I didn't fall at home, I was still away. And, uh, so went to the local hospital up there and the nurse, she was a little grumpy and um, uh, I think they've just had a very, very busy weekend and I'm sure they just shake their head and thank tourists, <laughs> right? <laughs> They're just like, if these people would just stay home. <laughs> but anyways, I'm really thankful of the, the local hospital. They're really nice and, and we've been going up there a lot of years and over the years we've had to go up there a number of times. So it's re it is really nice that um, there is a local hospital there for, you know, if you need them. Oh, Spartan Huskies. Spartan Huskies. I, I'm sorry. I forget what your name is. You said, oh, your grandma just fell. Oh, in her hip. My grandma is in a home. Grandpa and my uncle are living together. Oh, no. Um, I know. Falls are crazy, and they happen in, like, a split second. My son, Eric, was with me. And that's what I said to him. I'm like, you were walking with me. Did you see? Like, I'm like, okay, give me the insight here. <laughs> because nobody's ever been with me when I've actually fallen and hurt myself. So I'm, I'm like, you know, okay, was I walking too fast? Was I, you know, like, what am I, did you see? And he's like, oh, no, you were just walking and then you were on the ground. <laughs> it's like, so anyways, Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. Okay, Lynn. Oh, oh, you do use your hand spun yarn. I just thought it would be perfect in a more open pattern. That's right. Or textured pattern and perhaps the yoke of a sweater or lace a cowl. Just my own taste. Exactly. And you know what? It would absolutely be beautiful. So I'll have to consult you next time I get hand spun. <laughs> Anyways, this stuff's going to be mitts and we're going to give it a try. And we'll see how... Um, how it stands up and like really I'm thinking I'm gonna be gentle on my mitts Daisy's come to say hi you know I don't know I'm just well I don't know maybe I'm gentle maybe I'm not because I wear them a lot so I don't know we'll see come January February we'll we'll have to have a report back on how the hand spun's holding up so okay so let's talk about last week's project Daisy 
Okay, I'm going to sit here. So last week's cast on was a pair of shorty socks with this really pretty hand dyed yarn from Leo and Roxy. Sweet. We're going to send Daisy on her way. Um, and then while I was chatting last Monday, I had this brilliant idea that I should try to get the socks done in a week and we should do a one sock challenge, which a lot of you guys joined in on. And it was so, so fun. You guys were, um, I saw a few finished pairs of socks for the one week challenge and a little shorty pair and they were so, so cute. So I did not get a pair done. <laughs> which I'm sure surprises nobody, but I have to say I'm a little disappointed. I really wish I could have gotten a pair done, but I didn't, but I'll show you how I'll show you my progress. So this is the, whoa, that's bad. So there we go. There's the yarn. So called Overjoy. So it is hot pink and neon yellow and neon orange with some white. Like, oh, my daughter looked at it on the weekend and she's like, whoa, she's like, Th those are literally the colors of the highlighters, <laughs> the, the package of highlighters you get. And I'm like, yeah, it really, it is. So it's really, really fun and bright. And I thought this would be a perfect little shorty pair of socks to wear for the end of the summer. My plan was because I didn't know exactly how much yarn it was going to take. I sort of followed a pattern, but not really. Um, the Dainty Pattern by um, Northbound Knitting, Lisa Much. Um, the Dainty Socks, over on the Fiber Friends podcast, um, Cheryl and a couple of, of the viewers there are like in love with that pattern. It's, and it's a cute pattern. It's just, it's a, a shorty sock that has a folded um, brim, brim? It's not what I want, cuff, with the pico edge on it. And it has a heel flap and gusset heel. You do the heel just a little differently. Um, and it and it's super cute. So I just kind of looked at that because I thought, okay, I want to do that heel. So I just, um, so I wasn't sure how much yarn I was going to do, need. So I had three minis. So 60 grams. And I also grabbed this yellow which is really, really neon yellow, and thought I would do the toes yellow. But in the end, I'm not going to need this because um, I'm going to have enough of the overjoy. So I just decided that I would just do the whole sock in this variegated because the yellow doesn't really match the yellow in here. Even though this is a neon yellow, this is more of a greeny yellow, which is really fun, but it doesn't match. I wanted to do the toe, the orange shade in here, but they didn't have an orange mini when I was in there. They were sold out. So in the end, I've got enough of this that I can just do the sock all in one, in one color. So I didn't get a pair done, but I did manage to get one sock completely finished. So I'm still calling this a win. I, um, I didn't, I didn't knit her anything. I, I, didn't knit on my sock at all, really. I, I think I literally did one round. I had cast on for the other sock. I knit one one ribbing round today. I just really I laid on the couch and I just I just rested today. I uh, didn't feel like doing a whole lot of anything, so I didn't. Did a little self care, and I thought there's no way I'm going to get this sock done by today, so I just didn't rush. So, anyways, sock number two is cast on. I just did 64 stitches two by two ribbing and I did the heel flap and it is when you turn the heel so the heel flap on the dainty sock is what I have oh, I think I have always called it a band band heel I think is what I've called it I'm not sure what what she calls it um but it is where, with a normal heel flap and gusset you knit your heel flap and then you do your little short rows across. You knit across to the gap, you knit two together, work another stitch, you go back, um, purling across to get to your gap, you purl two together, purl one more. And so you're always um, just going across. This one here was just a set number of stitches. It was basically the same, just a little different. And um, 
So you just end up with your, with the other hill turn that I do, you find, it ends up more as a V. You've got a, a narrow number of stitches at the base of the heel and it widens out till you have all your side stitches used up. This one is just even all the way. And this was really a square heel. That's exactly that because it is, because that's what it is. It's just the same width all the way. So a square heel. Yes, yeah, so that's the thing. A lot of different heels are called different names. But that I'm sure that's exactly what it would be, Liz. So it was it was super fun. It was a great little way to do a heel. And honestly, I, I may just do that again on the other socks. I don't think it's one way is better or worse than the other. It's just whatever, whatever you kind of you you've been used to doing, right? Or whatever, whatever pattern is stuck in your head. So then I just carried on, picked up stitches, decreased them away for the gusset, knit the foot, tried it on haven't wove my hands in and then just did my toe and kitchener stitched it closed pretty simple and easy so I am going to try to get my other sock done this week while I'm on vacation and then I will have a pair so it will in the end I didn't get a pair done to wear the last day that I was up at the cottage and um but well, that's okay I got one done I am ha I am like halfway to a pair, you know, a lot closer than I was last week. So I will have a pair for next weekend. And I'm actually on vacation again in a couple of weeks. So plan B is I will have this pair finished and I will pack them and take them on vacation with me then. So still a win. And like I said before, I saw you guys were posting that you were working on socks. I saw some that were almost finished and I saw a handful of people who got a pair of socks finished this week. So I am super excited for you because you guys now have new socks and I will have a new pair right shortly. Do you have to give a shout out to my friend, Amanda? She's a little bit of a show off <laughs> in the week. And she started a day late. We started Monday and, and she, I was chatting about it Tuesday night and she started on Wednesday. Oh my goodness. She got three pairs done between Wednesday and Monday. Three pairs. I got one sock. Anyways, you don't have to compare yourself to anybody else because it's all, you know, you do the best you can. So, um, oh, Sally, she just cast on her socks. Exactly. Oh, Liz, that's how you do your heel. So you do the square heel all the time. Yeah, it's, it, it's great. I may just do it on my next pair too. So, okay, I see everybody's talking about Sam. So Sam, I will have 808 dish class done on Sunday. Sam, ban. Fantastic. Nice. So let's see. Let's see here. Catherine, I just signed up for the mindful knitting. Oh. October 20th. Oh, Catherine, that sounds fun. Mindful knitting retreat, October 20th to 22nd. I have a feeling I'm probably teaching that day. So it probably would not work. But that sounds wonderful. I'm just scrolling back. Okay. Okay. Anyways, so that's it. So my socks are off to a good start. And I have a feeling the next couple of days, it's just going to be a lot of relaxing and some knitting. So I'm going to keep working on those socks and see where we get. So fingers crossed next Monday. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. I say the F word and I always, always jinx myself. Liz says there are always overachievers. I know. What in the world is she doing? How does she get three pairs done? She had a ball of um, like this stuff, the rainbow and so uh, sock yarn, obviously, but long repeats. And there was yellow and pink and blue. And she got, the repeats were so long that she got one yellow sock, one blue sock was a pair. And I don't know if she ever ended up, how, how just how the yardage worked out if she got two socks of the same color for a pair. But um, yeah, the yardage was so long that she, uh, yeah, she ended up with, I remember the first picture, she had one yellow sock and that was it. So Sam, hi Sam. If you've got a question, just type it and um 
Anyways, so anyway, so that was exciting. I'm glad everybody else managed to get a pair done, and I will catch up. I will catch up. So what else? So really, that's the only knitting I did this week, which is <laughs> I ended up not having a lot of time. And I know this weekend I was at, up at the cottage, and I was knitting on the sock, and I was like, what was I thinking? Why in the world did I say last Monday, oh, let's do a, a one-week sock challenge when I'm working? And I'm working extra hours to get things cut up before I go on vacation, needing to pack, needing to clean, needing to, you know, like vacuum the car, get, you know, groceries and like all this stuff to go away. Why in the world did I think I could whip up a pair of socks? <laughs> it seemed good in the moment. I'm thinking I should have done it this week when I'm on vacation. But I don't know. Anyways, that's not what I said. So <laughs> next time I'll have to plan that a little bit better. Um, yarn dyeing. Fiber Friends are doing yarn dyeing for the month of August and vintage knitting. So I'm going to try and work on that a little bit this week. I've got some skeins of yarn out that I'm going to try to soak and dye probably the next cup, Wednesday, Thursday, and, and see if I can get some yarn dyeing done during the week this week. And uh, I haven't decided what my vintage knit project is going to be yet. I've got a couple things that I'm going to decide on. I just need to decide which one I'm going to cast on first. Um, let's see. I bought some more yarn. I bought a little bit more yarn. Oh, Autumn, you dyed yarn yesterday on your day off. That's so exciting. Sock yarn or chunky? And what color did you dye? Super exciting. Okay. So... I did I didn't I didn't bring up any other projects to show you. I just did a couple of rows on a couple of other projects. My Christmas stocking, I worked on another stripe on that. My white um boomerang shawl, the garter stitch shawl, I just did a couple of rows on that. Um anything else? I think just the stocking, that shawl, the wildflower shawl. Again, boomerang shawl. I just did a couple of rows on that just to say I worked on it, but really not any significant progress because I worked mostly on my sock when I had time. But let me show you. So I said I was at the market where I got the hand spun yarn. I also bought something else there because, you know, I have all this time to do another craft. But my nephew and I bought some kits while we were at the market so we could try doing some needle felting so let me see this there was two men there and they had a tent set up with beautiful needle felted projects theirs was mostly um like pictures that, that would be framed like um scenery pictures as opposed to the like the 3d object you know like my little snowman that I felted or, you know, all the different animals, the cat, the dog and whatever, owls and birds and things that people felt. These were like the flat projects and they were gorgeous. So, okay. So it looks like wool, water, needle is their business name and they are on Instagram, Instagram and Facebook at wool, water, needle. Haven't even looked them up yet, but they were amazing. They had some gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. And the one fellow, he was he was working on a piece and just um it was scenery and water, and he was just saying about how he incorporates fabric. So it's fabric. So his backing piece was a piece of wool suiting material. Um, I think he said he got it at Lens Mills. And I'm thinking, oh, you could like go thrifting and find something, right? Or or go to lens mills. And then he had sewn fabric on there. It was kind of like a blue and white tie dyed fabric that was kind of the start of the sky and then felt it over top of it. Oh, uh, it is so fun. So I am not um, very experienced at this, but anyway, so I got the, the little starter kit came with the foam piece and a bag of fiber. And then I grabbed another bag of fiber just because you can never really have too much fiber, right? And just a few different colors. And so Nathan and I spent a little bit of time one afternoon and uh, and just played around with it. He is so much more creative than I am, and he found a moth 
picture of a moth, sketched it out, and felted it. And it turned out amazingly well. The one little tip, so this is mine. Just, it, I just find it so relaxing. So there's just the foam that we were felting with. And I just played with colors. And it's, um, I don't know. I, I had a lot of fun. I found it really relaxing just playing with colors and layering colors over colors and just, I don't know, just the felting and just picking colors. It was a lot of fun for an afternoon project. And so what we used for our fabric to felt on is just a tea towel, 100% cotton, which was something that I learned. I didn't know that you could needle felt on cotton. I had always thought it needed to be either wool fabric or felt and most times it could be a Christmas tree it could be and that's kind of a, thank you Sally I was kind of thinking a tree an evergreen tree so I'm glad my mom looked at it she thought it was a mountain and I'm like it's green doesn't it look like a tree <laughs> I know I have a feeling this kind of looks when Scarlett gets into kindergarten and she comes home with with paintings and things I have a feeling this is going to be very comparable to her skills but you know what I had fun and I'm going to do more of it um so anyways yeah so if that's what they said they, they're see tea towel yeah so I have always just used uh, gone to the craft store and just got a piece of felt and used that to felt in and they said nope that you can use 100% cotton or linen so this this tea towel is now going to be art. <laughs> um, there you go, my stat. I know those could be yarn balls, couldn't they? So ornaments on the ground. <laughs> I know I was kind of go I was going for flowers, Sally. I don't know. I wanted this to be abstract. It could be whatever you want it to be, whatever you see. A Christmas tree, an outdoor Christmas tree. Yes. The balls have blown off. The balls are here waiting to be decorated. I don't know. This was kind of like to be a sunset. I don't, it was fun. I like it. So now Nathan, he is super, super creative. He sews. He embroiders. Um, he made his mom a hat, a reversible hat he sewed out of, out of fabric that he had thrifted. I mean, this young man, he's only 17. Um incredible so his um his his moth turned out wonderful and he was like yeah it was okay but he's he thinks he'll still stick to hand embroidering so which is fine but i thought he would enjoy doing this oh Catherine says i see pom-poms they could totally be pom-poms i love that yeah so anyways it was fun and this was a good afternoon and, you know, and part of me thought as we were needle felting, I'm like, I should be working on my sock. But you know what? This was fun. So you got to make memories when you can, right? Pretty soon. He's 17. He's going to be off to university. And, you know, kids, they grow up. They grow up. So anyways, that was really, really fun. Um, so that kit came home with me. So I may do a little bit more of that. And there ha there's something to be said for, um, I don't want to, the, the uh, I don't want to say stabbing, but, you know, just the, it's like a, a stress ball, right? You can just poke, you can just poke the fiber and you can do it as much or as little as you want, depending on the look you want. If you want it to be a more solid fabric or if you want it to be a little more fluffier. So anyways, oh, Diane, you need to try the craft. You know what? I like it. I've tried it a few times over the years, and my pieces are never, I'm never going to sell them. That's for sure, right? But you know what? I like doing it, and I think they're cute, and that's all that matters. So yeah, I definitely say try it. It's yeah, poking. I know. I like poking, punching, needle punch, needle punching. Yes. Um. Anyways, it's fun. So if you haven't tried it, I would say grab a little kit and just give it a whirl. I, I It's a fun afternoon project for sure. Okay, what else did I buy yarn-wise? List wool. So you guys all know list wool is so hard to resist. When you're going close, anywhere is close by, I just have to stop. 
It just, and it was great because I had Anita and the baby in the car with us. So she needed to, the baby needed to eat. So it was a perfect time. We just stopped in Listable and, uh, I, I ran in pretty quick. I didn't spend, uh, uh, a lot of time there. And I came out with a few things, but honest to goodness, because we had the baby in the car, you guys most know, right? Babies, even though babies are little, babies come with a lot of accessories <laughs> and it takes up a lot of room. So um, by the time we got, you know, a playpen and diaper bags and, and um, strollers and everything in the car, there was not a lot of room left for all of our, our you know, things, clothes and things that we had packed, let alone a stop at a yarn shop. But I managed to squeeze yarn in. Some of it I had to take out of the bag and squish in between places. But you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And I managed to get some balls in. So I came home with four balls of this just because I fell in love with the color. And of course, it's Bernat Blanket Big. And I just really, really liked the gray, the blue, the yellow. So I'm undecided, and you guys may laugh at me about this, but I'm thinking between either doing a bath mat. I don't know why. I just think this would be like the coziest bath mat. Stepping out of the shower onto this would just be so lovely. Or my four ball, I have four balls back here. So it's not really big enough to do a full afghan because this yarn is really thick. So I know from doing my big cat, that magic the cat, that these balls don't go very far. So I had thought, oh no, Diane, you can't touch that stuff, this stuff? Why not? It's, um, so I know it is like 100% acrylic or polyester or something. But it's super soft. It does look like a bathrobe, Liz. That's what my mom said, too. Except I don't think four balls will, will do it for me. Makes your skin crawl. Really? Because I find it so soft. Like, I don't find it, um, like, plasticky or anything. That's, well, then I guess, Diane, I will never have to fight you for it, will I? <laughs> um, so, anyway, so either a bath mat which I don't think we'll use all four, four balls. But probably I can make a carpet for my whole entire bathroom with four balls. Um, or doing corner to corner, um, like dishcloth, and do like a blanket um, for Scarlet maybe when she's a little bit bigger. Um, it, could, it might make a nice play blanket. It'd be nice and soft and squishy. Lay on the floor for her. I don't know. I think maybe that's what I do. I think I might use the four balls and just knit a square and then she can use it maybe um anyways I don't know I just liked it I couldn't pass it up so I brought it home with me and what else did I bring home with me well I brought home the Norse yarn I grabbed so let me see here this one here so this colorway here so this one here had a label on it and it was there. I think these balls were only $4. The ones with the labels were $4. So that, that's a pretty good deal. Um, but then I found this cubby here. This, other than this one here, they didn't have this yarn in the seconds bin. One, two, three, four, five. These five, okay, I'm going to pull one out. They're probably all going to come tumbling down. Okay. okay, so these ones here, this is a, like a dark brown, like a mocha chocolate brown, maybe. Yeah, it's definitely, it's a chocolate brown. It looks kind of grayish on the screen. But, so what did I say? There was five balls of these. So these don't have a ball band on them, but they are the same thing. And, uh, oh, Mary... Mary, yeah, get lots of rest, Mary, and um, yeah, take care of yourself. We'll see. We'll talk with you soon. Um, so I picked these up thinking there's only five in this color, 
I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking that maybe I could use this with another color. And um, look, well, actually, those two look nice together, don't they? Maybe I won't use these two balls. Maybe I'll put these two balls with this and make a sweater. That I might do. Maybe this won't be mitts after all, you guys. Um, but I like this. Even though it's mostly acrylic with that little bit of wool and what was it, polyester? Um, it feels really soft. So I may make this, may make this into a sweater. So I came home with more of these balls, the blanket bag, and the only other one ball to see, I did very good at listable this time, was I grabbed this just because I couldn't resist the colors of this. Just, I don't know, the, the green, the like lemony, gra lemongrass, I think of it lemongrass, so like the yellowy color, the peach, I don't know. I just really, really, really liked those colors. So, and it's kind of, it's, so what is this? This is like that scrubby. So half of it's like scrubby and half of it is, is cotton. So I thought, well, this could be dishcloth. This could be a little bit of a start for some dishcloth for Christmas. I think the first couple will end up in my kitchen, <laughs> but I, uh, I think I will work on this and, and this will be some Christmas gifts. So this came home with me as well. And take it. So that was my listable shopping, my yarn, the needle felting. The only other shopping that I did, I brought the, my bag up to show you. I brought a, bought a bag a couple of weeks ago at Little Red Mitten. So have you guys seen, this is a Della Q bag. Is the, I feel like, is the name? Okay, anyways. Yes, it is. I don't know if you can see it down there. So Della Q. Don't know if you guys have these bags in your yarn shops. Um, I seen these Della Q bags for the first time last year, maybe when we were on our retreat weekend at Linda's Craftique. Um, her yarn shop is absolutely amazing. And she had some of these bags there. And I looked at them then and I was like, oh, those are amazing. Oh, Liz, you love those bags. Yeah. So when I saw them last year, I was like, oh, I really like that. But I was like, I didn't know which one I wanted. Um, oh, Diane says they're beautiful. You want the train bag. I, I have just decided that I pretty much want one of every. Like, I just want them all. <laughs> So I was at Little Red Mitten, like maybe like a month or two ago. I don't know. It was a while ago. So this is the navy. So they're all navy with the brown leather bottom. And this is waxed canvas. And this has got stitch markers on here. So this is the tote. And I absolutely love it. It's got two pockets on the outside. On the back side, there's a zipper pocket and then on the inside there is all kinds of pockets again there's a zippered pocket what do i have in here stuff but um it holds a lot of yarn there's pockets all the way around and there's various sizes here so like you could put your phone in there i put my sunglasses in there there's smaller, like skinny ones that you can either put a pen in or you could put um, like needle tips in there if you had interchangeable needle tips or DPNs or something. Um, there is the yarn cutter in here. So, oh, I don't know how I can, right there. See that? Oh, can you see that little silver right there? That is an actual you can actually cut your yarn with that so really it looks exactly like the top of um a dental floss that little metal piece that you just cut your dental floss with that's exactly what it is and um so it is nice so it is great so i can put my sunglasses in there my wallet two or three knitting projects fit in here very easily there's pet there's um um, pockets on the inside so you can put a water bottle in there if you want to 
Um, it's lovely. And then the hardware on these is like so amazing. So it's the antique brass finish. And so it has a, a shoulder strap, which you know what? Honestly, I thought I looked at this and I thought oh, I'm just going to take this off because I'm never going to use it. I'm just going to carry it by the handles. I left this on and I am so glad that I did. I use this more often than not. So then you've got your hands free and um, it's lovely. Like in the handles, our leather, everything is really, really durable. Like this is going to last a long time. And so I have been using this pretty much daily. And it has the little feet on the bottom. So if you set it down, you're hopefully you're not going to be um, wearing the bottom of the bag. Um, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And um, yeah, I'm definitely going to get more. Um, so, yeah, and I will have another one shortly, and I'll show you that. I actually have the backpack on order. So when I was at Little Red Mitten like a month or two ago, they had this this exact, this same bag was sitting there. And I looked at it, and I'm like, I really like that. But then I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted, and I didn't buy it. And then I went home, and I looked on the website, and I was like, oh, my goodness. You know, there's the backpack there's the yeah there's the train bag which is more of a square one if i remember correctly with a strap on like a strap i think it had a shoulder strap as well um oh sam what was your question oh you said you had trouble with something so okay let me scroll back um yeah so there's there yeah there's a lot of really nice bags so i wasn't sure so i saw this one and I left it there and I went home, looked on the website and was debating. I'm like, okay, which one would I really like? You know, and then, um, and then I start overthinking it. I'm like, well, I like this size or do I want the smaller one or da, 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 da. And then I went back to Little Red Mitten because I was picking up, you know, I was actually picking up something that I had ordered and I walked in and this bag was still sitting there. I'm like, how in the world is it still here? And I had decided, though, when I was looking through on the website, that navy was the color that I wanted. There was gray, there was black, which were nice, but I thought I really wanted the navy. Walked into Little Red Mitten again. This bag was still sitting on the shelf, and I thought, that is a sign. So I just bought it. And <laughs> so I thought, I couldn't believe it had still been there and nobody had scooped it up. So anyways, um, yeah, so I'm loving this bag. I love the quality of it. So let me just take a look here. I'm going back through the comments here. Oh, Diane said cat bed would be fine. Was that for the really, the big, um, for not blanket, big yarn? That would be. So Daisy would never use it. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I could make her a bed and she would never use it. Um, Oh, okay. Liz says, oh, yes. Yeah, so for this stuff here, Liz is saying, I know acrylics feel much better. Yes. And they, than they used to, but just the thought of a sweater of it has me all shivery. I know, but you know what? I think this will feel all right. I would be fine with this. Liz says, I love those bags. Yes. Yeah, LQ. Um, keep going. Oh, Liz says, I keep going on LQ website. I may buy, buy one for my birthday. Yeah. I think I, it would be a great treat for yourself. Yep, the yarn color jealous Diane says. I'm working my way to having everything Della Q makes. Lynn, do you have some of her bags already? Um, I know. I don't. I really, I was looking at them and I thought, oh my gosh. Like, really? I could use practically one of everything. Oh, Jimmy Bean also has Della Q. Oh, Susanna. So what, is that on your, I saw you were on your Rebel um, MCAL. Is that that you were on like the last day? So is that what you're is that what you're you're ripping out and redoing the cast off? Uh, let's see here. Does anyone have Della Q Resec? Um, I was wondering what kind of straps they had. You know, I can't remember. I'm I think I saw one in person but now I can't remember. I know I've looked at too many. Oh, Diane Needle Emporium has a nice selection. Do they? Okay. Yeah, that's right. The train case, an old makeup case for knitters. Yes. <laughs> I know it was totally saying by me. 
Oh, Diane, yes, I need one of Cheryl's bags first. Well, see, and I would use these bags, like the tote bag. I just use it, and I put my other project bags in there, just, just because I don't like. I don't want to just throw multiple projects in there because then the, everything will get all twisted and tangled. So I'm really like as far as like this tote bag because it's so big. I don't want to consider it just my project bag. I'm thinking of it more. It's my purse that carries all my yarn. But yeah, some of the smaller ones. I don't really think even some of the smaller ones you could still put your your wallet in. Like really, what do you, what do we need? Right, our wallet, our sunglasses, our keys, our phone, and three knitting projects. <laughs> um. Oh, Susanna said you'd rather buy yarn. That's completely fair too. I have a little bit of a bag obsession, like hugely. <laughs> um, but. Um, yeah, I'm really glad I did not have any remorse. You know, the next day you wake up after you've like bought something and that usually tells the tale, right? Whether you wake up and you're like, oh yes, I got that. Or you're like, oh, why did I grab that? Right. And I was like super excited. I thought this was, yeah, this was a really, really good purchase. I really, really am happy that I have it. Yeah. It looks like a purse and then it has all like the knitting, like all the pockets like are perfect. Like you could put in all your stuff in there and project bags and tuck your wallet in. Yes. I know Cheryl was making, she made, um, about, she's calling them a basket. And so it's like a, well, I guess a basket with handles. And it was one, I bought one when she made them like a number of years ago. And I gave it to a friend for, who is a knitter for a birthday present. And, uh, she hasn't had them for a number of years, but she made some for this last show that she went to. So I'm, it's that and the knit night bags that Cheryl makes. And then I've got, yeah, I'm deciding between those two, what I will like. So yes, and exactly. And this bag will last for years. So I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. It's, it's worth it sometimes. Yeah. They are expensive, but if you can treat yourself or yet, yeah, yet yeah, you like, who was it said like your Christmas present or a birthday present, it's a, it's, it would it be worth it. I don't think you would be disappointed with it at all. All right, everybody. Well, that's pretty much it. And I think, I think, I think that's all I had to show you. So I'm going to work on my sock. I'm going to wind up this yarn right now. I've got the yarn swifters right here beside me. So I'm going to get this wound so I can find some double point needles. I'm not entirely sure. That's the only thing with the hand spun is it's a, t a little bit of trial and error kind of deciding what what needle size I'm going to use. But, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Sparkle's still not showing up. I can see it in person. But it's just, yeah, just the way the light catches it, sometimes there's a little bit of sparkle. So I'm really excited to get this started. And, um... Susanna, you have the what the funk bag. That just totally sounds fun. Oh, have a naughty weekend, everyone. <laughs> That's funny. Well, yeah, so it is already Tuesday, which means tomorrow's Wednesday. This is going to make the week go by a whole lot quicker faster now since we're chatting on a Tuesday night and not a Monday night. So I hope the beginning of your week has gone well and uh, it carries on having a fantastic week. You get lots of knitting time in and we will chat again next Monday. Kind of thinking maybe next Monday's new start might be some stash yarn. Thinking I, ne I need to balance a little bit between um, Oh, say, okay, before I go, okay, let me go back. I got to find Sam's question. I scrolled back, Sam. I didn't, okay, I got to go back further, apparently. So, yes, yeah, so I'm thinking I need to do some stash yarn. Oh, my double knitting project. I have one black stitch and three red. What did I do wrong? Um, You must, you knit with um that middle, you've got three stitches. The middle one, um, you knit with the wrong color would be my guess. So I would just un un unknit and purl those ones to get back to it and then take a look at it and um, and try it again to see if you, yeah, you must not have switched. You probably moved both your yarns, but you knit with the wrong one would be my guess, Sam. 
So anyways, everybody have a great week. Yes. So yeah, I'm thinking stash churn. I, yeah, I'm thinking I need to, at least once a month, I need to do a new start that is stash churn. So maybe next week. I may look at that this week while I'm at home, surrounded by my stash. I will see what is calling the loudest to me to be cast on, and we may go with that next week. So stay tuned. Yes, Daisy has come back, which is, yes, I think she just wants to say hello. So anyways, guys, have a fantastic week. Thanks for voting. We'll update on the myths, how they're going next Monday, and maybe have a finished talk. Maybe not. So have a fantastic week. Oh, a Daisy cocoon. <laughs> you know what? I know Daisy would love that. I mean, she loves sitting on anything that's nice. Oh, twice a month for, for stash. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. All right. Everybody have a great rest of your week. Thanks for voting for the hand spun. I'm super excited. And I will chat with you all next week. Bye.